Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to today's virtual event. My name is Rosemary Mugwe, the Africa Director at Kids Operating Room, and privileged to be your master of ceremony for today's event. Kids Operating Room is a global health charity focused on providing access to safe surgery for children in low and middle income countries. We are present in 36 countries in Africa. We work with governments, professional bodies, and partners to identify where the greatest impact can be achieved through the provision of safe surgery. We survey, design, and install world-class operating rooms equipped for the care of children. In addition, we support the training of local doctors to become pediatric surgeons where they do not exist and further scale up pediatric anesthesia provision. We may be asking ourselves, why children? Do you know that 50% of the population in Sub-Sahara Africa is made up of children? And that an estimated 85% of these children are expected to require a surgical intervention by the age of 15? Yet, the number of pediatric surgeons is minimal, with several countries having none. The scale of the shortfall and the impact in children's lives is known. Education and training are core to bridging this gap. Many studies have shown that there is a correlation between increased pediatric surgery workforce density and reduced pediatric morbidity and mortality. In the endeavor to support education and training in pediatric surgery in the African continent, Kids Operating Room funded the creation of the pediatric surgery e-learning platform for the African trainees. Today, we launched the first comprehensive Pan-African e-learning platform for children's surgery. The format will be some presentations from key individuals involved before open up, opening up to the Q&A. Attendees are invited to use a Q&A function during that session. We are super excited to have an amazing group of panelists who are so passionate about building quality pediatric surgical capacity. We thank you for joining us. At this point, I would like to acknowledge Professor King David, who is, not a, who is not a speaker today, but has been extremely instrumental to this process. King David is a professor of surgery at the College of Health Sciences in Abuja, and he is an honorary consultant uh, in breast and endocrine unit. He is a clinical oncologist in the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital. He's the immediate past president of the College of West Africa, and the facilitator for the, for the Works and Kids Operating Room Partnership. King David, we are honored to have you with us. Our first session, we will hear from three speakers. I'm delighted to introduce our first speaker, Professor George Youngson. George is a trustee of Kids Operating Room and a member of a charity, of the charity since inception. He has experience in surgical education, having been vice president of the Royal College of Surgeons in Edinburgh and the chairman of the Pediatric Intercollegiate Specialty Examination Board of UK in Ireland. He has been an external examiner in the FCS Pediatric Sur Surgery in Cosexo and an undergraduate examiner in the University of Malawi. He is the academic coordinator for this project. George is here to share with us the background to the e-learning platform and process. Our second speaker will be Professor Emmanuel Ame from Nigeria. Emmanuel is a professor of pediatric surgery and chief consultant pediatric surgeon at the National Hospital of Abuja in Nigeria. His research focuses on global surgery and access to children's surgical care in low resource settings. He has published several papers in international journals, written and edited books in surgical care for children. He is involved in the development of educational programs for West African College of Surgeons, Association of Pediatric Surgeons of Nigeria, and the Pan-African Pediatric Association. 
Professor Ame was a commissioner for the Lancet Commission on Global Surgery, and he's the current chair for Global Initiative for Children's Surgery. He is the academic lead for this project representing the West African College of Surgeons. Our third speaker is Eric Boston. Eric Boston is a professor trained in general surgery in Scotland in pediatric surgery in Amsterdam. Since 1992, he has worked as a pediatric surgeon at the Queen Elizabeth Central Hospital in Blantyre, Malawi. He is a professor of pediatric surgery at the College of Medicine of the University of Malawi. He has a long standing interest in surgical training and has been very instrumental in the development of the MMED surgery at the College of Medicine and the FCS pediatric surgery in the College of Surgeons of East, Central, and Southern Africa, which he is currently the Secretary General. Eric is the academic lead for this process, project representing COSEXA. Now, Eric and Emmanuel will share with us their expert opinion on the need for and expected impact of this project in the, in the West African region and the, in the East Central Southern African region for pediatric surgical trainers, trainees, and patients. Welcome and happy to have you here. George, over to you. So thanks for your introduction, Rosemary. Added to the um, core functions of providing operating theatres and equipment, uh, kids are soon recognised that that is not in itself sufficient. That in fact, what we need is more surgeons, which in turn means more trainees, which in turn means more training. And that brings the opportunity for new methods of training and new training styles with it. So added to the scholarship, and the existing training in clinical surgery. Kids who are looked at what we might do and we've created a merger of the leaders in surgical education in Africa with Cosex and Wax, aided and abetted by the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland to try and invest in the training of the next generation. And the starting point was looking at the existing curricula um, in, in both colleges and access, what access exists to standard texts and some of the online uh, sources. And what could we add to that? Well, adding access to the experts uh, throughout Africa uh, and the opportunity to link uh, with their peers and, and indeed learn with their peers um, helped us create new additions to the curriculum. Add to that some of the material subject matter that is not traditionally taught. So how to make decisions while you're under pressure, some of the non-technical skills uh, involved, uh, looking at how to run a altogether too busy clinic and indeed for trainees, for them to understand the examination process and how they might best pass them. So the features of the new program is that it's going to be interactive. It will, of course, review existing knowledge, but add to that with contemporary knowledge. It will promote reflection on the way we work with an emphasis on patient safety. And to do that, we've recruited a faculty of an excess of 70 consultants, populating 108 modules with clinical material. Some of that is provision of exemplar case scenarios, We've highlighted the professional competences and suggested some tuition in those areas. We've looked at uh, reviewing operative options at the operating table when you're faced with difficult surgical challenges and enable discussion between all parties. Altogether, a very exciting prospect um, for, for this new program. This uh, is about strengthening the quality of pediatric surgical training uh, in sub-Saharan in sub-Saharan Africa. I think the e-learning the e platform that has been created is quite timely and desirable, and it's coming at a time of increased momentum in global uh, global efforts to scale up access to safe, affordable, and timely surgical care uh, for for children. And this is really 
uh, crucial, but, but, but I think at the moment there are uh, some significant gaps in pediatric surgery workforce in Sub-Saharan Africa with really very severe uh, shortage. Um, at the moment, the density of pediatric surgeons in most Sub-Saharan Africa is about 0 0.1 per 100,000 population less than 15 years or even less than that. And we do need uh, about one pediatric surgeon to 100,000 population below the age of 15 years in order to ensure adequate uh, surgical access uh, for children. But we are still far from there. And just to give an idea about the magnitude of this gap, uh, for example, in Nigeria, with a population of about 200 million people and 43% of them are below the age of 15 years, we presently have a little over 120 pediatric surgeons, about 60 trainees, and our current pediatric surgery, surgeon density uh, deficit uh, is nearly 700. This is going to take several decades and years uh, for us to uh, actually overcome uh, this uh, gap in workforce. I think that it's the, the, the creation of the e-learning platform is unique uh, for several reasons. One is that it, it's really more than a textbook. It, it provides beyond uh, a textbook and, and the contents uh, are created by pediatric surgeons and trainers across Sub-Saharan Africa who are bringing on the uh, real on the ground uh, experience and, and expertise. And, and that's really uh, great and it leverages technology to provide a very engaging and rewarding learning experience uh, for, for trainees. And I think that it's, it's uh, really a very strong and an important and complementary resource to the recently revised uh, pediatric surgery uh, for Africa uh, textbook. For me, being involved in this project has been very, uh, really very exciting. Uh, full of great uh, expectations uh, for the future. But, but uh, training pediatric surgeons or expanding the pediatric surgery workforce is not just about numbers alone. The quality of training is actually so important and we do want uh, to ensure that we are graduating high quality pediatric surgeons. And what the e-learning platform uh, will do to our pediatric surgery training program is that to help to strengthen the quality of training with some very important key benefits. Uh, one of it is that the trainees can assess really very high quality uh, information and very up-to-date information at that. It also gives the trainees a unique opportunity to interact with and learn from uh, a very wide range of experienced pediatric surgery trainers across uh, Africa, which normally from their various countries and training centers, they probably won't have that kind of opportunity. And trainees can also actually create and develop their own network and friendship with other trainees and as, as well as trainers across uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. So, so for me, um, I think that the impact that this e-learning platform is going to bring on to pediatric surgery training in Sub-Saharan Africa is going to be really immense. Uh, and uh, we are full of great expectations for the uh, coming years. Hello, I'm speaking to you from the Mercy James Center for Pediatric Surgery and Intensive Care. That's our pediatric surgery unit in Blantyre in Malawi. As you can see, this operating theater has benefited from equipment donated by Kids Oral. And that goes back to the start of KidsOR's support for pediatric surgery, which began by donating high quality equipment and by renovating operating theaters or building new ones to expand the facilities for pediatric surgery. Since then, they have moved on to supporting the training programs in pediatric surgery within the region. Now, the essence of surgery is in the operating theater. It's here in the operating theater. Surgery is a craft which needs to be practiced, which needs to be learned. But the craft needs to be underpinned by theoretical knowledge. And the new e-learning platform, which we are launching today, is really a huge step forward for the trainees in pediatric surgery. The reality is that in a continent where 
There are less than half a surgeon per 100,000. And remember that the WHO recommends one surgeon per 20,000 number of population. And that's all surgeons. You can imagine that pediatric surgeons are far and few between. And a pediatric surgeon is not a luxury. On this continent, half the population is of pediatric age. So the reality is that any surgeon working here is going to be busy and will not necessarily find the time to instruct all his trainees in the theoretical basis of the craft they're learning. So the new e-learning platform has been developed in Africa, for Africa, and by the practicing pediatric surgeons of the region. That puts it firmly into the context of where the trainees are working. So the, not only that, the e-learning platform will also, in, in its way, be interactive and so lead to a network of young pediatric surgeons in the region who will come into contact with each other through this platform and hopefully develop a network of the next generation of pediatric surgeons in Africa. Thank you, Eric. Our next speaker is Gareth Wood. Gareth Wood is the chair and co-founder of Kids Operating Room. Gareth is a Scottish philanthropist and advocate he firmly believes that access to surgery is a basic human right and that every child should receive urgent health care when they need it. Which is why Kids Operating Room created an innovative and sustainable solution to removing the barriers to surgery for the world's most vulnerable children. Gareth is with us here today to officially launch the e-learning platform. Gareth will be followed by a demonstration of the e-learning platform by Eric O'Flynn from the Royal College of Surgeons Island, who is managing this project. Over to you, Gareth. Thank you, Rosemary. All across the African continent, children who need surgery face unparalleled barriers to getting the care they deserve. They live too far away from those who can help them. It costs too much to get to hospital and too much to stay there. There are too few surgeons available and long waiting lists. And in many places, there are too few specialist facilities with the right tools to care for small children. It can definitely be argued that the burden of colonialism still weighs too heavily on many nations' institutions and still plays a big part in the everyday lives of people across the continent. The work we do is in many ways needed because of failures to leave a legacy of strong and robust healthcare systems. In the race to bring equality to healthcare globally, these nations' institutions have not been able to respond to every child that needs surgery. These children deserve better, and we are immensely proud to work with the West African College of Surgeons and the College of Surgeons of East, Central, and Southern Africa to support their vision and their incredible, tireless work to do better by these children. Better access to care, better quality of healthcare specialties, better chances in life, a better tomorrow. Our Kids OR strategy for Africa was very much a process of putting onto paper what our friends and colleagues across the continent were telling us. Launching this online learning platform today is an important step towards achieving that strategy. From the very first day we started Kids Operating Room, we believed that we must invest in local people, skilled doctors and surgical teams to care for their own nation's children. And by working with governments to support their surgical plans, we will strengthen healthcare systems that ultimately will lead to a time when there is no dependency on foreign aid. By working together with a shared vision and complementing skills and in true partnership, we have already achieved so much. We are therefore very proud to officially announce that the new e-learning platform for children's surgery in Africa is officially launched. Access to surgery is a basic human right, and we look forward to seeing the number of children who will ultimately benefit from this incredible work. 
We hope we can continue to work on many more projects together in the future and that together we can build life-saving and life-changing surgical services for children across Africa. Thank you. The Pan-African Pediatric Surgical E-Learning Platform is produced by Kids O' War, the Institute of Global Surgery in the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, the College of Surgeons of East Central and Southern Africa, COSEXA, and the West African College of Surgeons, WAX. It's an exciting opportunity for COSEXA and WAX trainees to learn together with all pediatric surgical trainees across both colleges progressing through the course at the same time. WAX trainees can access the content through the learn.kidsawar.org portal. COSEXA trainees can access the same content on the COSEXA School for Surgeons platform. Each trainee and trainer has unique individual login details. There are three years of training content. Training takes place throughout the whole year with the exception of the months of April, October and December to facilitate college examinations and holidays. Content topic areas are mapped to the curricula of both colleges and are stylized as case-based learning accompanying clinical topics and professionalism. Module content has been written by a large panel of surgical content writers, mostly from WAX and Cusexa, and all content has been through a thorough editorial process. Much of the platform content is self-directed, meaning that trainees can progress through the training modules at their own pace, anytime during the designated week. The first and third weeks of each month are self-directed. The second and fourth weeks of each month are interactive discussion weeks, which also contain some self-directed content. This is a self-directed module. The interface is easy to use and works well across different devices. Each module provides clear learning objectives at the outset, Trainees can test their knowledge and progress throughout the module. Content is delivered in a variety of different ways to maximize engagement using text, images, video, and interactive elements. Modules encourage trainee reflection. Additional resources are made available to trainees for further reading and feedback is collected for every module, helping us to continue to improve the trainee experience. Next, we'll look at a discussion module. Here we're looking at a case discussion. A case history and imagery are provided for the trainee and a number of questions are posed. The trainee responds to the questions posed and has the opportunity to discuss both with the trainer and with other pediatric surgical trainees across the continent. At the end of the week, the discussion closes. The answers and further content are revealed to trainees.
This e-learning platform aims to be not just an important educational resource, but a learning community for pediatric surgical trainees and trainers all across Africa. Speaking personally, it has been a privilege for me to work on this project, which I believe is a creative and innovative approach rooted in the principles of adult learning and preparation for independent practice. I must commend the excellent instructional design work of Daniel Javid and Wakas Mazar in eLearning Square, and the impressive technical and project management work of Al Nogorman and Ines Peric in RCSI. I'm sure all of the many people involved are looking forward to the platform playing an important role in the growth of pediatric surgical training across Sub-Saharan Africa in the years to come. Thank you, Eric. Um, we further extend our special gratitude to all the content creators, 70 plus surgeons uh, all across the African continent, uh, the project team, the academic leads, uh, the project governance group, the designers and the IT department, in particular, Danielle, Walkers and Alan for putting this platform together. It's very interesting to note that the trainees can access the content from anywhere, anytime. Uh, they will also have discussions with fellow trainees from all over the region, as well as tutors is in one safe space. With this e-learning platform as an additional resource, trainees will also be able to back up their training with lessons from the leading surgeons across Africa. This will impact greatly on their training. Now, our next session is with Dr. Bell Oger, who is a pediatric surgery trainee who will use this platform. Now, Bell is a doctor from Cameroon who is currently training in Cote d'Ivoire. Bell just loves children and says that she feels obligated to protect them, especially when their parents or guardians are not able to. She was one of the very first enthusiastic trainees to test the model and has been very instrumental in providing feedback. Bell, we are happy to have you here as a beneficiary of this e-learning platform. And Bell will be sharing with us why she decided to pursue pediatric surgery and how the e-learning platform will support her training. Over to you, Bell. Okay, hello everyone. Everyone, my name is Dr. Olga Bell. I'm pediatric surgery training in Cote d'Ivoire. And uh, I'm in my uh, third year of uh, postgraduate, postgraduate training program. Sorry, my English is not good, so I will do some mistake. Uh, why uh, am I a choose uh, pediatric surgery? Is because it's my country, because I'm um, uh, originate from uh, Cameroon in Africa. We don't have so much uh, pediatric surgeon. And in my country and also in most uh, African country or anything other in other, con other uh, continent, I think in Asia is maybe the same thing is the general surgeon who uh, operates uh, children. And we have so much problem uh, particularly with uh, uh, the neonatal surgery. So that's why I decided to, to, uh, to train in pediatric surgery and not in other <laughs> surgery parts. Uh, why uh, am I uh, should I choose to, to come to Cote d'Ivoire is because one of our uh, master in Cameroon have been training here. So, and he, he recommended me this country to, to my training. And uh, what I, I can say is here is that we have all the same problem. And that may be uh, why this uh, e-learning platform will be interesting because uh, there is a connection with the, what we can call the, the West Africa and also the East, the East Africa, uh, all involved in treatment of uh, pediatric surgery problem, 
uh, we can interact and talk together and exchange all our experience. And for me, uh, particularly, uh, it, was, it was a really good thing because uh, we permit me, Kitso, and also all my, my master, like particularly Professor Bancole, to be involved in the, the conception, if I can say that, of the platform. And we, we have started the, 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 the learning uh, last week. And uh, what I can see uh, to today is that we are so much pe people who have been uh, registered to the, the, the e-learning and we can talk in and uh, also uh, exchange all our experience with some problem, what, uh, what difficulties we can uh, encounter in other problems, or uh, that's really why we really appreciate the, the platform. Thanks to Kitso to permit us to, to be involved with that. And very thankful because also what uh, uh, the things that is, have not precise is that the, the, regist the registration to the platform is free cost. Yes, because so much of us, we have so many problems to, to, to participate in meeting elsewhere. So really thankful, uh, Kito, for, for all that. Thank you, Bill. Our final session before the Q&A is, is with the president of the three colleges present here today. Our first speaker will be the president of the West African College of Surgeons, Professor Shireen Gwe from Senegal. Prof. Gwe is a professor of urology. He's an active clinician and a renowned leader and educator in global surgery. Professor Gwe's speech will be followed by the president of COSEXA, uh, Professor Godfrey Muguti from Zimbabwe. He is a professor of surgery and professorial chair in the Department of Surgery in the College of Health Sciences, University of Zimbabwe. He's also an honorary fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons, England. Professor Muguti's speech will be followed by the president of the Royal College of Surgeons, Professor Ronan O'Connell. Professor O'Connell is also the president of the European Surgical Association and Emeritus Professor of Surgery at the University College Dublin in Ireland. He's an honorary fellow of several surgical colleges around the world. Over to you, Professor Gwe. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Professor Soringe, and I'm the president of the West African College of Surgeons. This is an exciting day for the training of pediatric surgeons in Africa. And I'm proud to be here with the president of Quasexa at the start of this new program. And I would like to thank the kids of Great Euro for coming up with this idea and funding its creation. I would also like to thank the Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland to, for their support to the project and make it a reality. Caring for children of Africa, some 500 million of them is not an easy task. Dedicating your life to being a pediatric surgeon is at the forefront of that care. Planning, delivering, and always seeking to improve the outcomes of every child you meet. Ensuring that the trainees who graduate from our respective programs are of the highest possible quality is at the head of our pro training programs. And now for the first time on an e-learning project of two sister colleges, have come together to combine our curriculums for a single specialty. And it helps ensure every pediatric surgery trainee has the best possible chance of success. I encourage every trainee to use this service. Your colleagues have given freely of their time to create this for you. 
It is a training aid written by Africans for African trainees, and it will ultimately help more children access the highest possible quality of care. I thank everyone involved and look forward to seeing it in use. Thank you very much. In the first instance, I wish to thank Ms. Rosemary Mungwe, Kids Who Are a Director for Africa, and Kids Operating Room for inviting me to speak on this important occasion. Ms. Mugwe is our immediate past chief executive officer at the College of Surgeons of East Central and Southern Africa. And their involvement in Kids OR at the highest level has greatly strengthened the relationship between COSEXA and Kids OR. The specialty of pediatric surgery is a relatively young surgical specialty. It was not until the 1970s and the early 1980s that pediatric surgery started to evolve as a standalone surgical specialty. Until then, surgical conditions in children were taken care of by generalists in the various surgical specialties. In our region, there was no formal pediatric surgery training in the university-based MMED surgical programs until the advent of the College of Surgeons of East Central Southern Africa in 1999. Thanks to COSEXA, there are now 32 fully trained pediatric surgeons in the region. This development has greatly improved surgical outcomes in children across the region. Kids OR has been working in the COSEXA region for some time and has made a big impact in developing infrastructure aimed at improving the surgical care of children in the region. By venturing into the area of surgical manpower development, his OR is now providing a comprehensive packet for pediatric surgical care in the Sub-Saharan Africa region. When the plan to create an online training platform for children's surgery in Africa was first announced by Kids Operating Room, the world did not know about COVID-19. Yes, we knew that an online program would benefit our trainees. Yes, we agreed that it would be much more valuable if it was written by African surgeons for African trainees. And yes, we knew that by working with our friends and partners at the West African College of Surgeons, we could help ensure the highest quality graduates would emerge from our training programs. But we could not have imagined then a world where online learning would be so urgently needed as it is now. And therefore, very proud to join today's event to launch this important new resource. The entire curriculum for training surgeons in both colleges is now available in a single place for all of our trainees. When they use the platform, they will be taught by our continent's leading surgeons and they will be able to access that training in their own homes and at the best time for them. Training more surgeons is important. Training the highest possible quality of surgeons is even more important. This resource funded entirely by Kids Operating Room and developed in partnership with the College of Surgeons of East Central and Southern Africa, the West African College of Surgeons and the Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland will help ensure the children of Africa receive the greatest possible quality of care. And I encourage every trainee to take full advantage of this new resource. Thank you for your attention. I am delighted that RCSI is able to play an important role in this exciting coming together of African pediatric surgical expertise. This new e-learning platform will benefit pediatric surgeons, trainees, and most importantly, pediatric patients across the continent of Africa. Collaboration between the West African College of Surgeons and COSEXA will provide the necessary local expertise 
while RCSI and KidsOR will bring other skills that will underpin the success of the project. The RCSI Institute of Global Surgery, supported by the RCSI IT department and others, have contributed project management, educational design and IT technical expertise. I commend KidsOR for their leadership in bringing all the elements together to make this important project happen. RCSI has a long involvement in co-creating and supporting surgical e-learning platforms, working with, amongst others, COSEXA, the College of Anesthesiologists of East, Central and Southern Africa, and the WHO. It is truly exciting to now have the opportunity to work with colleagues in the West African College of Surgeons. RCSI is committed to working towards global provision of safe surgical care. The RCSI Institute of Global Surgery, under the leadership of Professor Mark Schreim, the O'Brien Chair of Global Surgery, has as its vision, rooted in equity and in collaboration with our partners, we create patient-centred, outcomes-based, global surgery research and education. I commend all partners on the good work in bringing this project to this point and look forward to seeing the growth of paediatric surgical training in Africa in the years to come. Uh, thank you so much. We have come to the end of the speeches today. Uh, it's been wonderful to hear from all of you panelists. Um, please join me all in uh, thanking these stimulating speeches and the valuable contributions uh, that they have made. Uh, without further ado, I want to welcome, warmly welcome David uh, Cunningham, our CEO, the Chief Executive at Kids Operating Group. David is passionate about achieving universal health coverage. This includes ensuring that every child has access to high quality health care when they need it. And no matter where they are born, he has championed the importance of high quality age appropriate environments for children's health care in low and middle income settings. Over to you, David. <clears throat> Thank you, Rosemary. And please, can I add my thanks to all of our speakers today? It's been a, a fascinating uh, journey through the background uh, to this project and the impact uh, that it will have. My job today is simply to coordinate uh, the questions. We've received quite a few in advance and uh, some have been added to the Q&A. So you can uh, post any questions you have into that Q&A section as we go through. However, uh, I would like to start um, with some of the questions we have received in advance. Um, and uh, Dr. Kisa, I would like to welcome you to the panel and to start by asking you, please, um, why is a service like this important? Why does it matter? And was something wrong with the way things were done before? Well, having recently, well, recently is relative, uh, been a trainee myself, there's always better ways to pass along uh, information to trainees. And I think for pediatric surgery, we're lagging behind. As a general surgical trainee, we had school for surgeons that had a similar uh, platform where we had case-based things. But I guess uh, for pediatric surgery, we didn't have enough content or there was no content for uh, pediatric surgery when I was doing that training. And now this specially made for this um, group of people who have a peculiar group of um, uh, patients to look after. I think it is very helpful, but to imagine that um, with all the surgeons in uh, WACS and COSEXA, that is a huge pool of faculty for us to employ, and there's great wealth to be gained from such a platform. And if I was a, a trainee again, I, this would be one of the best ways for me to learn how to move along and learn things. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kisa. Um, I'd like to go across to West Africa now, if I may, and Professor Banco. Um, Professor Banco, we were asked uh, several times actually during uh, the last few days, uh, will I get a qualification from using the e-learning platform? Thank you, David. Thank you. Morning, everyone. E-learning platform is not a new cal cal uh, qualification. It is just designed to support 
to support the program from uh, from trainings to the the program for to support the program for the qualification of your of the college it's not a new qualification so it's uh, it's done it's designed for all trainees to get the best qualification they can have and to be the best pediatric surgeon they can be. So it's not uh, a new qualification. It's just to support them to be, to learn more and to get the best qualification they can be. Excellent. Um, thank you very much indeed, uh, Professor Van Cole. So, very much, uh, I think both of those first two answers really pushing that this is about quality. Um, and uh, I think that that is something we heard throughout this process that quality arguably more important uh, than quantity. So uh, thank you for that. Um, Professor Maguti, if I can please come to you uh, next. Um, and I think that there was a, a genuine uh, question around your is this just a set of web pages uh, that we can visit anytime, or is it more than that? Um, and I wondered, uh, from your view uh, as the president of Casexa, uh, is it more than just a website? Thank you very much for, for that question and the greetings to everybody. No, it is much more than that. This is the first time our curricula for children surgery have been aligned and put online to support our trainees. You will work through web-based content, but every month there is also a moderated section where you discuss cases, have feedback from your peers on the current topic and get answers from a leading surgeon in the field. So it is a living, evolving learning experience that will benefit all trainees as they work to become pediatric surgeons across both surgical colleges. And I urge all trainees to take advantage of this important new resource. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, very much. And I, I think that really uh, resonates with what we heard in the speeches that uh, this is much more uh, than just that website uh, and the live interactive sections uh, will be really important. I'm going to turn now to some of the questions that have been coming in uh, as we've been speaking. Um, Professor Youngson, I wonder if I can put you on the spot and ask, uh, will medical students have access to the platform uh, or is it uh, for those on training programmes only? Um, thanks, David. I, I, so my answer is that they're not our prime focus. Our prime focus has to be the pediatric surgical trainees in Africa. And that's for a variety of reasons. Uh, one is that the learning that we've just been hearing about from Professor Maguti is, is kind of higher order learning. You, you're already going to have to have quite a lot of existing information on general surgical principles and practice. And pediatric surgery is building on top of that. And that's not a great starting point from medical students. So I, th I think that they, they needn't be excluded from the learning process, but that's not where we're designed to be. I, th I think the thing that's going to be really exciting about this is that we're going to be bringing up topics, we're going to be bringing up scenarios and problems, and they're possibly going to be more than one solution to each of these scenarios. And we're going to be looking at the options, which option are you going to choose? Why are you going to choose that? What are the advantages and disadvantages of each option? Now, that's a level of evaluation and synthesis that I think, I'm not saying it's going to be lost on medical students, they've got to start somewhere. But that's not where we're going to be putting our energy to begin with. So let's let's not say it's never going to happen, but that's not where we're going in the first place. Great, uh, thank you. And I think that that approach of saying uh, let's never say never 
Um, but for now, the focus has to be on those in the training programs uh, is definitely the right approach. Um, I'm going to turn to a question that we were sent in advance, but there's also been asked um, in, uh, in the live Q&A. And Rosemary, I wonder if I can turn to you for this. Um, we were asked in advance, will this be available for Francophone students? Um, and we've been asked in the live Q&A, in what language is the platform going to be available in? And I wondered if you could pick that up. Thank you, David. Our, currently, the platform is in English. Yes, we plan to create a Francophone version of this platform. The first phase of the project, we want to build a system and have all the content first written in English. Once all the 27 modules are complete, our plan is to translate this into French. So we'll need many French speaking surgeons to support that uh, uh, process as well as moderate the discussions. So it's a big, big project coming up, but it will come. Great, so very much. Um... The plan is not that this is done uh, and here it is, but this is the start uh, of something that is going to get bigger uh, and uh, will open up to other languages, hopefully in the not too distant future. Um, I'm going to return to some of our pre-submitted questions and uh, Professor Ame, if I can uh, please ask uh, you, um, why does it matter who writes this content? Um, did it need to be African surgeons who wrote this? Uh, thank you, David. Uh, that's an excellent question. Um, I, I think that the situation we have in pediatric surgery uh, practice across Africa is, is such that the, the clinical scenarios, the way patients present and the available infrastructure and resources and the actual on the ground uh, situations are significantly different from what obtains in high income countries. So, so it's really not helpful to have contents created in some children, in a children's hospital uh, in the US or in Europe, for instance, or by, pro, by pediatric surgeons there um, to be used for training in Africa because the trainees are going to face completely different situations that are not similar uh, to what happens in high income countries. So I think that having the contents created by pediatric surgeons in Africa and the trainers in Africa who have the actual experience about the on the ground situation uh, is so important because it provides the, train the trainees with the, the real context in which they are practicing. And in addition to that, it also uh, gives them the opportunity uh, to learn from those that are actually training them on the ground. And I must add that these trainers and pediatric surgeons in Africa, apart from bringing in their experience on the ground in Africa, also bring on standard practice from the knowledge and experience and skills they have already acquired along during their training and with colleagues in high income countries. So I think that's such an important component that is created by pediatric surgeons and trainers in Africa. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, well, thank you, uh, Professor Ame. And I have to say in the early days when we were um, developing this idea, that was something that came back time and time again was um, the importance of context relevant. So I, I'm so pleased that, that you agreed with that. I think we should turn to Dr. Bell now, if I can. Um, and Dr. Bell, uh, a question that uh, has come up a couple of times. Um, you are a trainee, you are now using the system. Is it easy to use um, and uh, how do you find it? Okay, uh, hello everyone. Yes, it's really very, very easy to use and uh, you can access this uh, through your, your phone, your mobile phone, your tablet and also on your, your computer. And for so far, uh, we are worked through the, the first module. And I can say that is uh, things uh, is really, really, really uh, smoothly. 
Great. And Dr. Bell, if I can stay with you for a minute, please, because we've been asked in the live Q&A about sort of limitations of reliable internet access. Um, and there's nothing we can realistically do to, to improve that. But how have you found uh, the site? Does it work OK even on relatively limited internet access? Uh, well, uh, yes, we, we can use it. Uh, for now, uh, for now, I'm 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 using my my mobile phone for this uh, Zoom, and uh, I have some problem with my my internet access. But uh, uh, you can use it uh, every time you want, and I don't know, I don't know how to it. It's really really accessible. Okay, and I. I suspect uh, I, will, I will hopefully get to Eric O'Flynn and he might be able to mention uh, any design features that affect that um, too. Um, Professor Borgstein, if I uh, could come to you, please. Um, and uh, the question that's been asked uh, to some extent earlier by the medical students, but we were asked in advance as well, is, is this only for the trainees um, or can anybody else access it? Um, yeah, good question. The, the, the platform that we use in Cosexa is the one I can, can talk about, and that's the School for Surgeons, which in theory is widely available to all the, um, the fellows of the college. And I think it's, a, it's an underused resource, unfortunately, and I, I wish it was more available. So we would hope that this platform, the e-learning platform, will be used by the, the consultants as well. And I think you know, having having had so many collaborating on the on the production of this um, of this uh, this course, so many people are invested in it, and I I'm sure they will you know use it as a as a source for you know looking up questions, looking up difficulties, and perhaps you know preparing for other trainings, and generally as a you know it's there for whoever wants to access it and whoever can. So. I would hope that it will be seen as a, you know, as part of CPD for the college in the, in the <coughs> certainly in, in the cross side and that the, you know, the word will spread and that, you know, path dependency will develop and um, it'll become the sort of, you know, the, the Wikipedia for pediatric surgeons. Well, that would be a, a wonderful place. Uh, to get to. So uh, thank you for that answer. Um, I think that uh, this next question, I actually I would like to, to put to Gareth if I can, um, because in addition to this e-learning platform, um, it's been rightfully pointed out that we are now providing some scholarships for training in children's surgery at Kids Operating Room. Um, and Gareth, the question was, how do we get one of those scholarships? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the question. Before I answer it very quickly, I just want to say a big thank you to Kate Smith and Dave Tipping and our entire production team for putting on this event today and also to Rosemary for uh, doing such a good job of hosting us. Um, to answer the question, these scholarships are an important factor in attracting the absolute best people into pediatric surgery and to direct them to the places with the greatest needs. So we've worked with Cosexa, Wax. Um, ministries of health and individual hospitals to identify how scholarships should be offered that are tied to a particular country for future employment. And that's allowed us to already start training the first ever pediatric surgeons from Burundi, South Sudan and Liberia. As to how you get one of these scholarships, they are advertised to the colleges and you are encouraged to apply in the normal way. So who gets them is entirely down to the colleges and relevant ministries of health. Thank you. Great, uh, Gareth, thank you very much indeed. Um, as uh, I, I look at the live Q&A, there are a couple of questions around who can access this. Um, again, you know, can uh, existing surgeons access this? And I think Professor Borgstein's answer that um, fellows of the colleges uh, can have access to this, um, hopefully has covered those. Um, and the question, again, just around the poor internet access, are there any plans to put this uh, into a, a sort of single downloadable site? And I think if I could come to Eric O'Flynn, Eric, 
maybe you can pick up that question from the live Q&A, but also just talk to us about the general sort of maintenance and development of this uh, service. How is that going to be done? Thanks, David. Um, okay, well, first of all, to pick up on, 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 on the speed and the internet issues and, and downloadability, um, you, you alluded to it a moment ago, but you're right. I mean, the site has been built purposely to, to work well on low um, bandwidth speeds. I won't go into the, um, I won't bore the audience for the technical details, but um, the way the video um, is, is there uh, and the, the image quality, et cetera, it, it works well. Um, on low bandwidth speeds. Now, it isn't uh, available 100% offline. The reason for that is the essentially the format of the teaching. Some of the content, as we've said, is self-directed. Trainees can progress through it individually at their own time. But you know, very importantly, this is um, this is not just a textbook. This is also a classroom. Um, so there is a, a really strong live, interactive discussion element with it. You know, uh, and for that, clearly, um, an internet connection is needed. Um, uh, as Dr. Bell had mentioned, it works well on mobile phones, and we find that while, while Wi-Fi or, or fixed um, internet is not available, mobile um, internet very often is. So I think that's, um, and is getting better year on year. It's not a, a perfect solution, but I think, um, I suppose as Dr. Bell has said, it, it works pretty well. So that was your first, the first question. Um, the second was around the, the ongoing um, maintenance um, um, of this. Well, to, to paraphrase Prof Maguti from a few minutes ago, it's a, it's a living, evolving platform. Uh, and we've said there's a hugely interactive element to it. So um, we're not even close to the end of this project. And in fact, maybe there, maybe there never is an end to this project. It is, it's, it is ongoing, content writing is still, um, ongoing content moderation of the, the various discussions is still ongoing. So we, we will be um, recruiting more and more people, uh, more and more trainers, more and more surgeons to come on board. And, and Rosemary has mentioned the a Francophone version as well. There's so much more to do. It's a, it's a living um, platform. And indeed in the administration of this, it, it's very much a, a collaboration between COSEXA, WAX, um, or CSI and Kids of War in how this is administered on a day-to-day -day basis. Eric, uh, thank you very much indeed. Um, and uh, I feel that uh, Rosemary probably feels the weight of that uh, ongoing support and development uh, as part of her team's uh, responsibility within Kids of War. So thank you uh, for that um, and for all the work uh, that I know is still to come as we continue to take this uh, forward. Uh, Professor Tierney, I wonder if I can uh, put you on the spot with a question from the uh, live Q&A. Um, and uh, will LMIC trainees outside of Africa um, have access? And I just wondered what your thoughts on that might be. Well, I think this has been developed with the uh, close collaboration of the surgeons in COSEX and in WAX and uh, is now been rolled out to that group in that region. I guess uh, there's lots of commonalities uh, in the practice of paediatric surgery, particularly in other low income regions, and I think that's very much a possibility. Uh, the language issue has already been mentioned, and I guess the first challenge is probably to ensure that we expand the reach across the francophone sections of, of uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. But I don't see any barriers to that um, uh, uh, in terms of conceptual barriers. I think there are some logistic issues that would need to be worked out. I think the key thing, the key measure of success or success driver is this local engagement so that the local faculty uh, and the local surgical community are engaged. And I think in terms of uh, using it in those other jurisdictions, that would be a key step to put in place. So finding the right partners is definitely key. Great, thank you. Um, and I think that I would echo that uh, the success of this project has largely been a result of the hugely positive engagement uh, right across the board. Um, I'm going to stay with the live Q&A for now. And uh, Dr. Kisa, I'm going to come back to you and sort of put you on the spot, if I may. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Professor Lacou has uh, pointed out the importance that the online learning is monitored by the local trainers. So is this, uh, is this an additional burden or is this a, simply a, an effective means of, of staying in touch with your trainees uh, and continuing to support and monitor them? 
I think it's a way of continuing to support and monitor them. It's not an extra burden. I mean, when you have someone training under you, it's for pediatric surgery and many other fellowships, it's an apprenticeship. And if you're not with them, you're not going to get them where they need to go. And for us to be able to monitor uh, what's going on, you're able to give them tricks that you've learned over the years and how for them they can meet uh, the next challenges and how the world is changing. Maybe the challenges I face now might be different for them, but you as a teacher, you have to be able to open their minds to those possibilities. Wonderful. Uh, well, thank you very much. Um, that is uh, the end of the live questions and uh, the pre-submitted questions we have also uh, gone through. So, so thank you everybody who submitted a question. And please, can I also thank uh, the panel members uh, for those excellent answers. And Rosemary, I will hand back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we have come to the end of this event. Um, as uh, Alia said, this event is recorded and is available for all. Uh, before we end the session, I want to remind you of one of our big picture. You know, why are we doing this? The e-learning platform is part of our Kids OR 2030 strategy. And in addition to this, we're going to install 120 operating rooms across the region, support training of pediatric surgeons as well as pediatric anesthesia providers. We aim to support education and training of pediatric surgeons and anesthesia providers on the pipeline, which is on the pipeline. And with this, we want them to deliver high quality surgical services for children, and most imp importantly, to train people who are capable of training the next generation of surgeons um, and anesthesia providers uh, going forward. Um, our founder's dream and our goal is to ensure that no child dies or lives a life of disability because of a surgically uh, treatable condition. Each one of us here and every day has an opportunity to advance this course in providing quality surgical care for the children of this continent. It has been a great pleasure to have you all panelists and all our audience from all over the world. This launch would not have been possible without you. To all our hosts behind the curtain, Kate and Dave, kudos and thank you to you all for taking part in this event. And we wish everyone using this platform uh, a new service uh, success in every way. Thank you so much. <laughs>